Okay. I'm ready to go and you are. Okay. We're here and it's fantastic. It's only taken two and a half hours to clear the airport. Well, I've got to say everybody's friendly and everything works well here in Dublin. The people have got a good sense of humour. I saw the sea yesterday for the first time. It was a colour of an emerald set on the maker's hand. Um, well, you know, the reason I went to Ireland to do this was because I have a bloodline. My father was from Dublin and I lived there when I was a baby and I hadn't been back for 60 something years. So I went back to visit my son and we played some fantastic music and I really fell in love with Ireland. And while I was there I ran into a mate of mine, a guitarist, a renowned guitarist, Australian originally, called Stephen Cooney and he said, why don't you come to Ireland and do an album? And that's really how it happened. Two years later, there I was. Under clear skies will sail, a fair wind will drive us, good fortune will prevail, and if God's willing... They're a mixture of sort of Irish-Australian stories, I think. I mean, a lot of Irish, a lot of Australians, I should say, claim Irish heritage. And there's a big synchronicity, I think, between the Irish and the Australians. So I've written songs about <clears throat> ballads of, you know, Irish settlers coming here, ballads of shipwrecks, about... Um, there's a love song there um, about the fishermen, about the loggers. Uh, it's all really a mixture. It's a bit of a mixture of Irish Australian stories. Hence, it's called the Irish Australian Story. Well, when you know someone like Steve Cooney, who's very persuasive, um, I managed to get some of the best musicians in Ireland, including people like Martin Hayes, um, uh, Dermot Byrne, uh, just look wonderful, wonderful players. Um, we even got a, one of the guys from Hot House Flowers to play on it. I mean, it really is a mixture um, of wonderful, wonderful Irish musicians. So he said it begins at hard times and the coldness filled his heart. When I came back, really all I had was the raw tapes. There was a lot of work to do, so my brother Doug Brady is a very good producer, a very good recording engineer, so we took what Steve Cooney and I had recorded and we post-produced it. I redid some of the guitars. I certainly did most of the vocals here, although we did use some of the Irish vocals, but we communicated by Skype and all the modern technology, so we sort of shared and exchanged ideas. Steve remained as the producer. We spoke every night sometimes at ungodly hours for him because over in uh, uh, Ross Trevor where he lives it was sometimes five or six in the morning but I don't think he goes to bed before then. Well you know I often wonder if my father knew his dad. Well we based ourselves in Ross Trevor which was one of the northern counties but we travelled all over Ireland. We went to Cork, we went to um, the Burren, which is on the west coast, we went to Kinvara, which is Galway, and uh, Waterford, and Dublin. So we travelled all over the place. We stayed at you know, great hotels, we stayed in people's houses. It was a wonderful road trip. And re we really met a lot of the locals, particularly the musicians, and they were wonderful. And of course, we played music everywhere we went. I've never known a country that has greater or more music, where music is more important. Ireland, everybody has to go there in their lifetime, particularly if you've got a song in it. And if God's within, we will find the upgrade. 